Good morning again. So let's do our part three here. So on part one, we talked about how the server only moves forward with its simulation, and but it still may render interpolated data if you have interpolation target, and especially if you have a player as a host. That's just for visual purposes only, not for simulation. Um, then we on part two of the video, we talked about how a client does prediction, how the server reconciliation works when you receive data from the server, and so on and so on. And um, But that's that's a client doing prediction of an object. It doesn't matter. We exemplified, uh, the example was with a object that this particular client had input authority for, so he was re-simulating with that input, but you can actually do that with any object, as we're going to explain again, but, um, and it was touched on, on video part, uh, part Number two, but um, now we're going to focus on on the case of w how does another client perceive the movement that this guy is doing that he's doing as prediction data. So let's add here another client that's also connected to the same server. So that would be client one in this case. So we're going to try to use the same kind of timeline and, 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 and let's assume that this guy has kind of similar ping to, this, to the server as this guy and we'll see how all this plays out. I'll keep here not the snapshot data on this client because it would not matter. What will matter for us is what happens on the server for this new client and I still want to keep some, something, some stuff about the predicted data that the other client has because I want to show how that is going to later impact what you perceive here because it, it might be interesting for us to see why, why like compensation is needed and so on and so on. So let's, let's talk about this. So, um, so similarly to client number zero, this guy um, just received from the server data about tick 100. That means that this guy is going to receive a snapshot of tick 100 containing the data about obje all objects he is able to see that are on his its area of interest or in data snapshot, everything, and so on. And that includes data about our character that's controlled by this client here. That on this guy's screen, because he's predicting, this thing is being seen somewhere in here, right? So that's what we've been talking about on the previous video. But on my screen, I'm the second client. How do I see that guy? I actually see that guy between two ticks on the snapshot buffer. Actually, let's first understand fixed update network here. So what happens on this client is exactly the same thing that happened on the client above, on the client zero. So I will re-simulate tick 101 with fixed update network on all objects. I'm going to do the same for 102. And let's stick to the case of uh, all the way to 103. Doesn't matter in this case if it was forward, uh, one of them was forward or not, if everything was resim, it doesn't really matter. We just had fun called three times here because we received data about the 100 and we need to simulate all the way to 103. But this object that we're talking about here, for the pr from the perspective of client one, is a proxy. So you were using get input to simulate stuff forward, for example. So this guy is going to basically ignore fixed update network. You can actually use the attributes to make it be ignored completely on proxies. So what will happen is, remember the state and the state previews that we're going to have, we will call, up, we're going to have the copy of that here. But because we're not calling fixed update network, these two copies of it will basically be copies of the same data here. And then, uh, so for the proxy case here, what do we render? So if, you, if, if this object, the prefab was set to auto, this guy is neither the server nor input authority. That means that auto defaults to snapshot interpolation. So what does this guy see on the screen? It's not what you just received from the server. It's something in between two ticks that you had from the server. Damn magnets, I'm gonna make it here. So 
It's something between two ticks you have from the server. Not, re not normally the last one, because you, you, it's dangerous to interpolate here. So you, you normally interpolate somewhere in here with an alpha. And what is the alpha in question here? Is what we call interpolation alpha. From your runner API, if you get interpolation alpha, that's the alpha that's going to be used to interpolate here. And you actually have the, the interpolate from and interpolate to, which are tick numbers. And in this case here, interpolate to is 99. And let's say interpolate from was 98. It could happen with a gap as well. If you, if you had network loss and you, you received a gap and it interpolates a bit faster between two, I mean, between two ticks, it still smooths out no matter what. You don't have to worry about that. But normally, you're going to receive consecutive ticks, 98, 99, and you're going to be interpolating between these two. So now, what happens if we, so our render is somewhere in here, right? So let's say we accumulated one more unit update with a new render, just like we do for all the examples. So we have a new render that we don't have new data from the server. It's just a little bit more on the render side here. So then basically, just the interpolation target moves a bit. No fixed update network is called again. And in this case, it's actually a proxy object. So it basically moves a bit in the interpolation between these two here. But let's say again, just like we did on the next last video, on the next call to unit update, we did receive new data from the server. So we finally received data about 101. And we still have our network buffers here. I'm going to stick to these two because I don't have this many cubes. So what happens now? A reset. And we're going to re-simulate again all these, just like we did. And we're going to have 104 just like we did for the other one, assuming it was enough delta to accumulate a new forward. But remember, for this proxy object, we're not doing anything in fixed update network. So basically, the difference is that the state and state uh, previews will be copies of 101 now, not copies of 110. And probably our interpolation from change it to 99 and the interpolation to change it to 100 on the ne ne this next render. And we're going to be rendering somewhere in between these two. So now we are on the last update uh, of, the, of Fusion here compared to this one here, which is an interesting um, situation. So, so let's, let's, let's use this. So let's, let's say this guy is actually seeing himself as the green guy interpolated between these two. And I am seeing him somewhere in here. So if you put it here, it should be something like here. It's, I'm moving only on this axis, right? So ignore the up down. The up down is just server, client, client. So I'm not seeing this guy where he is here. I'm seeing him here. But I could actually simulate him forward here. So proxies can actually simulate data forward. It just it just happens it happens if you do this. If if on fixed update network you do not ignore proxies, you can technically simulate them forward and have your proper predicted copies of the data. Does that mean that you're gonna render them here? No. It just means like an, I explained on the previous video that you do have the the snapshot buffer for previous data and you also have the predicted data of that guy. So then um you can, again, decide if you want to render by default, like auto does for proxies, which is it renders um, the snapshot data between two previous known ticks from the server, or if you want to render just like the other guy. So see that when this happens, you're going to be seeing everything on what we call predicted time, which is much closer to the, the, the present. And that that creates a lot more mispredictions, but, but error correction is there to help smooth these out, right? So that's why predicting everything is a valid approach, especially on games that have a lot of objects. So it, it, it becomes, the, the point is that Fusion lets you do whatever you want. It, it, you have fixed update network called for full prediction for everything, whereas you do predict data or not is your decision. It, it may impact performance, it depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, so in how, how complex your game is, it may be a feasible option. And then you, you want to decide 
what do you do with the with this data that you have? If you if you only have snapshot data, uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense to try to render predicted data. So then you're going to probably be rendering just snapshot data. But if you do have two, you still have the choice of which one you're going to show, which is what you're going to use on your interpolation target. Remember that all these that I'm explaining here only applies to um, the auto automatically interpolated network behaviors like network transform, network character controller, and network rigid body that I'm going to explain separately later. But um, if, you, if you have your own network properties, all you have available for you are uh, these two yellow things. If, if you're calling fixed update network, there are going to be these two ticks. And if you have this, actually, you only see on the network data uh, normally the last one you have. So how do I actually make my own properties smooth, either here or here? That is why what you use interpolators for. So all this that I explained for every case here, you can have for your own data that is vector, floats, quaternions, all this kind of data, you can have all the same treatment of automatic interpolation between either snapshots or this by selecting auto interpolation mode or force predicted force snapshot. You can have all that using an interpolator for your network vectors, floats, quaternions, and this kind of data that can be interpolated. So using those snippets that we share about interpolators, can have can let let you do the same kind of treatment I'm talking about transforms here for the pre-built network behaviors you can do for your own data very easily and smooth. The only thing that we will not get for free is error correction. So error correction you have to do yourself. But that's another topic. So on the next video I want to talk about a, a little bit about lag compensation and um, and later I'm going to record one just to talk about network rigid bodies how they how they work so see you next time